Section 11.9 deals with the, as the title says, the nth remainder for Taylor series for function about the point x equals x sub 0. We can read it up here. This is a quick introduction to what the nth remainder is all about. It really shows that as the number of terms, that's this right here, as the number of terms approaches infinity, then the series approximation for any function approaches that function itself. And that, that makes sense the more we think about it. And if we recall our constant referral to Taylor and Maclaurin polynomials as infinityth degree polynomials. Um, these definitions over here really are both expressing this being the remainder is equal to the function minus the series approximation, or this says that the function is equal to the series approximation plus the remainder. The remainder looks like it's some sort of function, but it's really r sub n <coughs> of x, excuse me. And this is obviously talking about the remainder nth degree of x. Not x sub 0, but of x. The real focus of the chapter and the last topic of the course is theorem 1 point, sorry, 11.9.3 right here, the remainder estimation theorem, sometimes referred to as Lagrange error bound. It's referred to by the College Board as Lagrange error bound. Uh, people, yes, as young as me, know it as the Taylor remainder. Here we have the remainder magnitude irrespective of sign. We want it to be less than or equal to this expression right here. So what I'm going to do is offer a slightly altered version of that inequality. This isn't going to change. R sub n of x, boom, less than or equal to. It's really the term where the m is that I'm going to change a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. So it, it's mentioned briefly up here. And then there's a referral to this interval. Some of that isn't clear to me, and when I read it in the text, it's not clear either. So the interval, by the way, is x sub 0 to x. This f to the n plus 1 of x. This one really looks like, oh, well, it's just the n plus first derivative of the x value that you're approximating the function for. Keep in mind that we'll be approximating the function for x equals some k value. So we'll be like approximating f of 3 and looking for r sub n of 3. So the x value will be a particular value that we're using the Taylor or Maclaurin series for. And the x sub 0 is the point, it's like our point of tangency for our linear approximation. It's the point where the series starts. So what we want to keep in mind is that when we saw this graphic here that had x sub 0, which is the point about which we start to expand our Taylor polynomial, we were looking for this interval of convergence here. So all of these were x values in this interval, anywhere in this interval. What this m is referring to up here is the maximum error that could exist for any of those x values in the interval. And the interval that it's referring to is from x sub 0 to the particular x value here, the particular x value for which you're approximating a function output. So the interval i that's mentioned right up here is this interval from x sub 0 to x. So I would prefer to write f, or the, the n plus first derivative, I'm sorry, right here, as you can see me erasing that, I'd prefer to write this as z. It's because it's a variable we never use. It's sometimes referred 
Uh, it's used, excuse me, uh, to represent any complex number, but we don't have to deal with that in calculus, fortunately. So I'm going to call it z. If I take that idea and I morph what's in this theorem definition, I get the n plus first derivative of some value in this interval, and I'll, I'll rewrite that in a second. So that's absolute valued. <clears throat> Excuse me, x minus x sub 0 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So that's, that's the expression for which we're looking for the remainder to be less than or equal to. This is the component that the textbook calls m, referring to max error. It's briefly mentioned in the introduction up here. Just not so sure it's clear, and this I could not find anywhere in the textbook. It's referred to as you go through their solutions, and you're like, well, wait, what are they talking about? It's, it's in the e to the x example, which we'll look at. So <clears throat> I'd like to suggest replacing this blue number right here with this expression here in yellow. Now let's read the introductional, introductional, introduction paragraph on approximating trigonometric functions. These are our key questions right here. About what point, x sub zero, should the Taylor series be expanded? For trigonometric functions, that should be obvious. It's the same sort of x sub happy face that we looked at for linear and quadratic approximations. It's the nearby point uh, for which function outputs and derivatives are easily determined. This is going to be the kicker. How many terms in the series should be used to achieve the desired accuracy? And this paragraph here really reiterates what we said about picking, particularly for trigonometric functions, just pick the easiest angle closest to the point that you're trying to estimate function output for. So this one should be obvious, sine three degrees, our x sub zero is gonna be zero. So we're looking at a Maclaurin series. So that information is like handed to us in the directions use the Maclaurin series, also indicating that zero is the, the nearby easy point. Five decimal place accuracy. <clears throat> when I do the setup, you'll see that we go out to the sixth decimal place. So we go point, Zero 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 five zeros five. So point zero 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 five. And we'll discuss in class why you go out to the sixth place and use a five when you really want five decimal place accuracy. So what's here? I can't remember if that's one of the big four that we said to memorize, but it is the McLaurin series for sine x. Uh, in a later slide in this pencast. There's a list that includes that and a few others to commit to memory. So that's the McLaurin series for sine. And then this is the sort of altered version of the nth degree Taylor remainder. So we kind of look at this first order of business, and it should be obvious that three degrees can't be dealt with in degrees. So it's three pi over 180. So we have pi over 60, easy peasy. So our x value in this expression and in this series is going to be pi over 60. So you'll see pi over 60 everywhere there's an x value. Here is your pi over 60. This, of course, is 0. That doesn't need any absolute values because n being a positive integer, which obviously, obviously excuse me, makes n plus 1 factorial, always positive. The reason why I chose to use z is that pi over 60 is not the x value that goes here that I'm highlighting in green. z is in the interval. Maybe I'll stay in green. So z is an element of the interval 0 to pi over 60 for which the n plus first derivative of sine x, maybe I'll put that in parentheses, eh, maybe I don't need to, is a maximum. It's obvious when you deal with sine and cosine, and not so obvious when you deal with e to the x. But again, as I said, we'll look at that. 
<clears throat> we know that the derivative for sine, or the, the higher order derivatives for sine, are sine or cosine, give or take a negative. Well, since the remainder formula calls for absolute values right here, then the maximum, the maximum that the nth derivative of sine could possibly be is 1. So this formula here becomes the nth degree remainder for pi over 60. That's the point we're trying to approximate. I want it to be less than or equal to 1. I can change this whole thing out right here. This is going to be messier the more I refer to it. Change that whole thing out to 1 because any order derivative of sine uh, absolute valued is going to be 1. And so the 1 is, of, of course, unnecessary times uh, pi over 60 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So we want that. So we want our remainder to be less than or equal to that. The question said, I'd like it to five place decimal accuracy. That means in my setup, I want to take this specific remainder expression, pi over 60 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial and make it strictly less than, as we promised, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I know I said 6 and put a 5. So we go out to the sixth decimal place. Interesting to note from here, dot, 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 which is in, in the textbook and in your own mind, in my mind too, the only way you're going to solve for n is calculator play. Which seems odd because if I had a calculating device, then I would just approximate sine 3 degrees. But as we've seen numerous times, we're not after, like, the answer. We're after the process. Which leads us to the smallest value of n that meets this criterion right here is n equals 3. Hence, for 5 decimal place accuracy, we would say that sine pi over 60 is approximately equal to, equal to this series up here, not the first three terms. It's a little, little confusing here when you see n equals 3. Really, n is in, in this formula up here. n is really k. So I know it's weird. It's like uh, n is 3, but it's really the first two terms because that's when k equals 3, hence n equals 3. So n is a particular k value. And I know that just sounds confusing. The more I say it, the worse it sounds. But according to our work in the five decimal place accuracy, we can get x minus x over 3, 3 factorial, which is pi over 60 minus pi over 60 cubed over 3 factorial. Now, calculator play will show that I'm correct, that the this approximation will equal whatever your calculator kicks out for sine 3 degrees out to five places. This example shows uh, an, an interval that's not so easy to determine the maximum higher order derivative. So that's why I like it. Uh, we're looking to use a Maclaurin series. So that means x sub 0 equals 0 for e to the x, which is right here. To approximate e, and I'd simply like to put in e to the first, indicating that x equals 1, the interval we're talking about then is 0 to 1, and the value then that maximizes the n plus first derivative has to be in that interval. Again, we have this five decimal place accuracy. We'll set it up before, go out five zeros, and then a five on the end, which is to the sixth place and we will set it up. So we want, what, f sub n plus 1 of z times 1 minus 0 to the n plus first over n plus 1 factorial 
less than 0 0.12345, sixth place with a five. So a bit of cleanup here would be the n plus first derivative of z times, you know, one minus zero absolute value to the n, minus, uh, n plus one, excuse me, so I'm not even gonna put that in. n plus one factorial less than 0 0.12345, sixth place with a five. So, question, what's going on right here? I need the value for z in this interval that maximizes the n plus first derivative of e to the x. Fortunately, e to the x for us is e, has every order derivative equal to e to the x. So, the n plus first derivative of e to the x is e to the x, yay. Not that that really helps us out any, because now I want the value here in this interval that maximizes e to the x. Well, e to the x is a monotonic, strictly increasing function, so that's easy. The z value is 1. So the maximum value that this could possibly be is e. Do you see the irony yet? We're trying to approximate e, and e is used in our approximation, so that's going nowhere fast. But in the interest of process, let's put it down. Whoops, not or equal to. Strictly less than one, two, three, four, five, six. Now what? I'm gonna pause for dramatic effect. Got the idea yet? You know I'm changing colors because I'm pausing. Bam, what can I put there that would allow me a much more useful inequality rather than an inequality that contains the value I'm trying to approximate. I know that E is approximately equal to 2.71-ish, not really sure. So I know since I'm trying to maximize the error, I know that if I use three here, I will still maintain the criterion necessary. So if I go three over N plus one factorial, one, two, three, four, five, five. I'm not going it's not gonna affect my choice, and calculator play will prove it. So all the way down, dot dot dot. I'm gonna skip the calculator play and tell you that by the magic of math, n equals nine. So e to the first is approximately equal to one plus one plus one over two factorial. I'm just looking up at this series right here and expanding it out and filling it in until I get to n equals nine or k equals nine. So if this would be considered zero factorial, first factorial, two, three, so I would expand it out to eight factorial. Plus one over three factorial. I said eight factorial, I meant nine factorial, because I want it out, that's supposed to be a plus, I want it out to where k equals nine, here k equals zero. So even though that's 10 terms, we can't get confused between n being the number of terms or n being the value of k that we want in our series. And then again, here you could find the value, it's calculator play from there. All right, the only thing to do with this slide is to look at it, take a picture, take a screenshot, commit it to memory. Uh, these are the hyperbolic functions, which we are not going to deal with, so do not worry about them. This is a binomial series form. We're not going to deal with that either. I highly doubt you're going to see this one. Um, and then, yeah, I would, I would commit these to memory. They look like they would all be useful. Keep in mind they are all Maclaurin series, although the Taylor series equivalents would not be much, much more difficult to determine. All right, let's see if we can take this homework example to the setup, leave the calculator play for later. What do we got? Sine four degrees. So X sub zero equals zero. We're looking at a Maclaurin series. X equals 
4 pi over 180 or pi over 45 degrees. Here's our Mercorian series for sine x from the other side. Let's see if we can recall what the remainder formula is. R sub n of x less than or equal to the n plus first derivative of z x minus x sub 0 absolute value n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So we are looking for r sub n of pi over 45 less than or equal to. We know that all, because it's a sine or cosine, this one is going to be 1. Oh, forgive me. I should have put that in absolute values. That should have gone there. That's going to be 1 for this case. 1. Yeah, I guess I'll put it in. Oh, my colors are messed up. I'm getting messed up here. So 1. Put that in. Uh, it's a Maclaurin series, so x sub 0 equals 0, as said. Pi over 45, absolute value to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Factorial cleanup on this mess. Pi over 45 n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, r sub n pi over 45. Um, we want five decimal place accuracy, so we're doing what we did before with 0 0.5 zeros and then a 5 in the sixth decimal place. So pi over 45 n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Strictly less than 0 0.12345 and 6 dot 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 n equals 3, which really means k equals 3. So the approximation we need is determined by these two terms. So sine of 4 degrees is approximately equal to pi over 45 minus pi over 45, whole thing cubed over 3 factorial. And whatever that comes out to in calculator play will be the approximation of sine 4 degrees accurate to 5 decimal places. All right, I almost feel like sitting here and letting you do it and saying it's your turn, but it's not very useful. Now we're doing cosine 3 degrees, 3 decimal places. Should go pretty quickly, right? x sub 0 0 x equals 3 degrees, 3 pi over 180, better known as pi over 60. I know that my um, fn plus 1 of z, that's going to equal 1. I know that because sine, cosine, um, higher order derivatives, we already discussed that. Three decimal place accuracy. So the setup, I mean, once we have an idea what's going on, this thing flies. So this is simply one. And, you know, I don't really need that. Then I have pi over 60 absolute value to the n plus first over n plus one factorial strictly less than three decimal places, one, two, three, and five in the fourth place. Clean up on this is pi over 60 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial less than 1, 2, 3, 5, dot, dot, dot. That's going to give us n equals 2. So this is the k value that you want to stop at when you're using the uh, Maclaurin, as I'm looking at the Maclaurin series for cosine. And it plays out just like sine in the last example. So the the only twist to this one, I think, would be for a function, ln x or e to the x, where the, the interval doesn't have a constant maximum, where you have to look at the tone of it and see where in the interval. Remember, that interval is x sub 0 to the x value you're approximating. Where in that interval does the maximum higher order derivative occur? And come to think of it, um, you would always have to have a monotonic function. Otherwise, you would just be, that would be a nightmare. All right, um, that's a wrap on this. Again, you can play with the uh, calculator play up here to verify n equals 2. 
Oh yeah, forgot. Tori out.